Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to all our viewers worldwide that today gathered to listen to our webcast, the appeals of Swear Imaging Technology for Mass Markets, that's powered by your group. I'm Faisal El Kamasi, Senior Global Sales Support Manager for your group, and I will guide you during this webcast. <clears throat> this webcast will discuss the overview of the current SWEAR imaging industry, hype and opportunity of SWEAR imaging in the consumer world and new technologies for mass markets. So I would like to welcome how two speakers, Axel Clue, imaging and display technology and market analyst at Your Intelligence, and Mathieu Verstaite, innovation leader and electronics and software architect at Piseo, both parts of your group. Before we get started, I encourage you to submit questions to our speakers during all the live events using the Q&A box at the left bottom of the screen. Question will be answered right after the presentation with the Q&A session of about 10 minutes. In case we don't have to time to answer all of them, we will follow up with you by email. To conclude, this live event is recorded. You will receive tomorrow an email with the link to access the recorded session. So now let's start the webcast. Axel, the floor is yours. Hello everyone, my name is uh, Axel. So thank you Faisal for the introduction. So today I'm going to talk about the appeal of uh, Swear Imaging Technologies for the mass market. Uh, okay, so first of all, I'm going to do a quick introduction of, um, of uh, what is the Swear. Then I will talk about the existing imaging, Swear Imaging market, because it's still it's a niche, but it exists. Uh, then we'll detail the, the, let's say, the appeal for the mass market, and the reasons and signs of this appeal. And finally, we'll conclude the presentation. Okay, so let's have a look to the introduction. So first of all, uh, SWIR uh, refers to a, a certain part of the infrared spectrum. So here on the figure, you can see on the left-hand side, the visible domain, uh, which is around uh, between 0 0.5 micron, 0 0.7 micron. Then there is the near infrared between 0 0.7 and 1 micron. And then there is the SWIR. Uh, so there are different segmentation of the sphere, but here in Yale we consider that this segmentation, so the, the, the limit of the sphere band, is between uh, one micron and three micron. Then there is the medium wave infrared, where and the long wave infrared. Among this uh, sphere band, uh, sometimes we can uh, subdivide this domain in several subbands. So usually, most of commercial detectors which are, which are sold on the market. Uh, sense the sphere between 1 micron and 1.7 micron. And the 1.7 micron corresponds to the limit of detection of the, what we call the standard in-gas detector. So that's why most of applications operate uh, in that range. Okay, so now let's have a quick overview of the different markets and the different technology for, uh, uh, technologies of the sphere imaging. Uh, so first of all, the markets. So uh, there are some existing markets already. Uh, SWIR is mainly used in the defense field, in industry, a little bit in medical, also a little bit in R&D, astronomy, research, etc. If you look at the right-hand side of the slide, you can see you, you have a table. So sorry for the for the, the mistake with the display here, but you have a chart with the different technologies. Uh, Ingas technology is the most mature one. It's used for years, for even decades, and this is the technology which is used for all the existing applications. So this Ingas uh, technology is quite mature, and also the price of the sensor itself, so just the chip, is quite uh, expensive compared to the other imaging technologies, uh, like the silicon technology, for example. And as an example, the, the price of an Ingas chip is usually several thousands of dollars. Uh, so that doesn't fit the specification for the consumer or the automotive field, for example. So uh, in the recent years, there is a new appeal for the SWIR technology for the for, for there is an emerging trend towards mass market, so the consumer and the automotive. And to address this market, we'll need, uh, we'll need a technical description, a technology that could be released 
for a few hundreds, uh, a few thousand dollars, a few, sorry, few dollars, uh, or at least uh, quite lower cost than the ingest technology. So the candidate technology are the quantum dots, quantum dot sensors, and maybe also the silicon germanium, but mainly the quantum dots. And currently, this, this technology is not as mature as ingas, but there are uh, already some commercial products, and the price can, could vary between a few hundred and uh, a few dollars and uh, one thousand dollars, for example. Okay, so now let's have a look to the existing sphere imaging market. So sphere has been historically used in the defense field mainly. Uh, for example, so here you have an example on the left hand side of the screen. It could be used by the soldier in the infantryman equipment, or it can be integrated in targeting pods which are mounted on uh, vehicles like drones, planes, tanks, etc. Usually the sphere is used for, um, for performing long range imaging, and it uh, sees through the smoke, the, the, the fog, the bad conditions, let's say. So it's very useful for long range imaging. And also, we can uh, use the SWIR to do some laser target designation. And because SWIR is not a usual technology, and not all armies, all uh, enemies are equipped with the SWIR technology, it gives a, a stealth advantage to the team which is equipped in SWIR. So that's why uh, today, laser target designation is the main application for the SWIR. Then uh, it's also used in, in the industry. And this is a, a field which is uh, increasing in terms of uh, volume and use. The specificity of uh, the sphere is that most of objects um, have a specific response, specific reflectance and in the sphere domain. So that means that we have different contrasts uh, depending on the nature of the object. So this is very useful for sorting application, uh, for food, uh, pharmaceutical goods, for the plastics, the waste, textile, etc. Then uh, several plastic content uh, are transparent into the sphere. So SWIR is uh, useful also to, to do some, um, some content inspection, for example, uh, monitoring the, the level of a liquid through a plastic bottle or something like that. Here you have an example on the image here. It's also used for laser beam profiling in the telecom industry and also for solar cell inspection. OK, now uh, you have a look here to, the, to the, the existing market, the current market. So first of all, uh, let's look at the left-hand side of the, of the slide. So here we talk about uh, area scan imager. So we, we consider only the chips, and we talk about uh, area chips, because in Swear we can also find some line scan chips. So here it's out of the scope in this quantification. You can see that in 2021, uh, the main market is defense in value. And uh, the world market, in terms of uh, volume, is around uh, 11,000 pieces of SWIR majors. So the SWIR is a niche, and it's a high value market, but it's a niche in terms of volume. It's used in a, a, a there are very low shipments. And the, the, the secondary market in terms of value is the industry. So we'll, uh, we'll come back later on how this, these two markets could evolve in the future. So here you have a look to the, to the SWIR market. On the right hand side, you have the, the different players, uh, the providers, the suppliers of the imagers, uh, actually. So you, there are two uh, strong leaders, uh, SCD and Sensor Limited, which are more focused on a defense application. Let's say they ship a little bit more than 2,000 um, pieces of, uh, of imagers by year. Then we have a lot of secondary uh, players. Uh, with, uh, so it's, it's highly fragmented uh, as an ecosystem, let's say. Uh, for example, we, we have big names of the infrared, uh, infrared industry, like Teledyne FLIR or LINRED. Uh, there are also some new players or players with alternative technologies. So most of these players provide in-gas sensors. And there are Swevision System and Umberian that uh, entered the market a few years ago with quantum dot imagers uh, technologies. So here are the first commercial products of uh, quantum, uh, integrating some quantum dot imagers. And there is also Sony, which entered the, the, this industry a few years ago. OK, so now, uh, now let's analyze the science towards the, the appeal of SWIR towards the mass market. OK, between 2020 and 2021, uh, there were two events uh, that may show that there is an interest from the, from the consumer imaging field. It was the entrance of Sony and ST Microelectronics. So first of all, let's uh, have a look to this chart at the bottom left of the slide to, to have a look to the CMOS image sensor industry. 
So you see that Sony is uh, the leader, currently the leader of the CMOS image sensor industry, owning 40%, almost 40% of market share. ST Microelectronics is also a big name of the consumer imaging. Uh, it has around 6% of market share. So this is your estimation, of course. And on the right hand side, you have the reason why uh, ST Microelectronics is known, for example, uh, it's the supplier of the, um, of the new global shutter uh, CMOS image sensor, which is integrated in the Apple Face ID modules here. So currently, this is not in SWIR, of course, it's in here. Okay, so now let's have a look to the, their activity. So Sony entered in 2020 with a commercial product. Uh, it was an INGAS sensor uh, released for the, for the, the industry uh, machine vision application here. And in 2021, ST Microelectronics announced publicly that uh, it was uh, working on uh, the development of a SWIR quantum dot imager. Uh, so these big names of the consumer industry are now involved into the swear industry. Okay, so now uh, why the swear could be appealing for the, um, for, the, um, for the consumer field? So first of all, uh, for years now, there is an increasing trend towards the, um, towards the, 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 the increase of the screen-to-body ratio in smartphones, for example. So here we can see an example of a one-to-one screen-to-body ratio. And today there is a pressure between the smartphones uh, manufacturers to, to, to release uh, uh, the, the highest uh, screen-to-body ratio form. Uh, so now if we, we look at the different sensors that are in the front face of the sensor, we can find some facial recognition module, for example. And facial recognition module use an active illumination in near-infrared usually. So if we want to integrate, to reach the screen-to-body ratio, we need to integrate the sensor and also the, the, the light emitter uh, behind the, the, the screen, so behind the OLED screen. And we believe that the, the, trans the transparency of the OLED material is uh, higher into the sphere. So that would be less challenging by using uh, a sphere uh, wavelength as an illuminator compared to a near infrared uh, wavelength. So we believe that this is the main driver, the main motivation for the development of <coughs> sphere technologies for the consumer. But there is also uh, there, there are some uh, other other interest for the sphere. Here on the left hand side of the graph, uh, there is um, a small chart showing that uh, the A safety regulation is more relaxed in the sphere uh, range than in the near infrared. That means that we can use a higher optical power in the, the illuminators, which are used in the different three D sensing modules, and that means that uh, thanks to the sphere, we can increase the detection range of the 3D sensing, but also it, it would be uh, more reliable under high ambient light conditions, so more, more reliable in a, a lot of situations, especially in long range. This is interesting for uh, the consumer augmented reality. So the 3D sensing module that we can find at the rear side of the, the smartphones, uh, this is also useful if we integrate some 3D sensing in AR and or VR headsets. And this is also useful for the LiDAR, for the automotive LiDAR. OK, now let's have a look to uh, the technological propositions of Sony and ST Microelectronics. First of all, let's talk about Sony uh, on the top of this slide. So here, we, we propose a comparison be between the Sony technology and what is made usually uh, in, uh, in, gas, in the in-gas sensor uh, landscape, let's say. So let's have a look to the classical ingas imagers. The classical ingas imagers are made, uh, I made, I made with uh, an ingas focal plane array, which is bonded to a silicon without circuit, thanks to indium bumps. So with this technique, so the, the, the bonding of the ingas and the silicon without circuit is made at the chip level, first of all. So that means that for classical ingas imagers, we have very low throughput and also a low, um, low yield in the bonding process. Also, these indium bumps limit the pixel pitch in terms of size. So usually, most of products uh, have a 15 micron pixel pitch, sometimes 10, but it's very challenging to decrease this pixel pitch uh, and so reduce the size of the chip at the end. So on the contrary, Sony uh, used a process that uh, was developed for other technologies uh, in the silicon industry, let's say, silicon and the, the consumer field. They are reusing their, their famous copper to copper bonding to, to, to bond the in-gas focal plane array with the silicon uh, without circuit. 
So thanks to this process, uh, they are able to uh, remove the syndrome bumps and to decrease the pixel pitch uh, to five micron, which is quite unique. And then also this process is made at uh, the wafer level, uh, basically on 12 inch wafer. So that's, uh, that is the reason why the, 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 the Sony sensor has a quite big uh, price advantage compared to uh, the competitors in, in gas. So the, the performance of such a sensor and the specification could be discussed, but at least the size of the chip is uh, lower due to this lower pixel pitch. And at the end, the price of the chip is also quite lower than the other in-gas technologies. So currently, because it's in-gas, that probably doesn't fit the, the, the price uh, requirement for the consumer or the automotive industry, but it's a nice uh, processing step. And this is very competitive for the, the industrial market, um, for the industrial market currently. Then we have ST Microelectronics. So ST Microelectronics takes another direction. Uh, they directly focus on the consumer uh, or automotive application, mainly consumer, and they use a quantum dot uh, technology. So the advantage of the quantum dot is that we can process, uh, we can deposit the quantum dot, so the, the, the material which absorbs the square wavelengths directly on the wafer. So that leads to a, um, a wafer process, and at the end of the day, a quite lower cost than in gas. So we believe that the quantum dot is currently the, the best candidate for the consumer applications in the short term. Okay, let's have a look to some uh, alternative technology. So uh, ST and Sony, micro, uh, Sony and ST Microelectronics are big names from the consumer, but there are also uh, some other companies that advertise the, the use of SWIR for the, for the automotive market mainly. So there is TriEye first. Uh, so TriEye is um, working on um, what they, they claim to be a CMOS compatible technology. So a new type of sensor that would not be in gas and would not be also a uh, quantum dot imager. So we believe that this could be silicon germanium imager. And then they also uh, made a module that is called the CDAR to demonstrate the capability of the Swear and automotive. And the advantage of such a system is that, uh, so this is a gated imaging system, and the advantage of that is that you could uh, take at the same time, on the same platform, a 2D and 3D image of the scene in front of the vehicle uh, under harsh condition, night condition, so in a more reliable way than uh, using visible or near infrared. So this is the advertisement around the, the swear imaging in uh, the ADAS, the automotive. Then there is also Artilux. So Artilux um, is involved in the silicon germanium directly, so this is uh, explicitly the case. Uh, they are partnering with uh, TSMC as a manufacturer of the, the sensors, and in 2020, they also started a collaboration with Onivision. And uh, here you can see some example of uh, what they, they, they show about the use of a SWIR LiDAR, a SWIR, uh, LiDAR. So these two companies propose uh, new technologies than quantum dot and ingas for this, uh, this mass market. So now, if SWIR happens, when it could come on the market? So we believe that, um, so, so now in 2022, uh, for example, uh, we have new generations of phone, but still not, the technology is still not mature enough to be integrated in the, in the consumer world. Especially, we believe that uh, if quantum dot technology is the best candidate, it won't be ready uh, before 2025. So we could expect that this technology won't be uh, integrated massively between uh, before 2025. For the automotive market, we believe that the first samples could be delivered around 2025 also, but next the penetration could be lower than in the consumer uh, because of the nature of this market. So at first, the swell technology could penetrate the high-end car segments, let's say. Uh, then there is also a lot of specification uh, due linked to the automotive, a lot of, um, let's say, requirements, specific uh, performance requirements and the reliability requirement to be checked uh, thanks to due, due to the nature of the automotive market. So we believe that the penetration of the SWIR technology could be, um, could be slower than in the consumer field. Okay, so now let's uh, talk about the conclusions. Here we have the market forecast that we drew uh, during the, when we released the, the SWIR imaging report at the beginning of the year. Uh, sorry for the color code. Uh, here on the bottom, on the top left, it's not uh, okay. It's not valid. So the blue bubble is the machine vision. So first of all, we can comment that uh, we believe that the machine vision, the, the industry, sorry, 
the industry will grow a lot from 2021 to 2027. The reason why is that um, the market is still uh, a niche, so it's still very small. And uh, there are some new technologies, technology proposition, like the, for example, the, the, the sensor from Sony or the quantum dots, which make um, the technology at lower cost. So it's more attractive for new customers. And we believe that the, the industrial market will grow, but it's more a, a value market. So uh, the, the product will still be expensive, but uh, the, the volumes will be still low as, a, as nowadays. Then there is this uh, yellow bubble, which pops uh, between uh, 2021 and 2027. It corresponds to the consumer. So in that case, uh, so we estimated that if the swear uh, en uh, uh, enter the market, the consumer market, that could directly reach in the first years, millions of units, even 100 mi more than 100 million of units, because we are a lot of smartphones on the market. So uh, actually, we believe that this could come a little bit later. So 2025 could be the start, but 2027, that could be a little bit lower than what we estimated at the beginning. But still, if the swear comes into the consumer, that would be huge. Uh, it will be mainly uh, a volume-oriented market. The price will need to be very low. So it will be a volume-oriented market. Uh, and at the end of the day, the value will be uh, more than five, uh, five times the value of the, the, the industrial market. For the automotive, uh, here it's the small orange bubble here. So as we said before, we believe that the technology could penetrate a little bit slower uh, than in the consumer. So that's why in 2027, we don't believe that this market will be as huge as the consumer or the industry. And also in uh, our timeline, probably this will come a little bit later than 2027. Okay, so now uh, key takeaways of this presentation. So um, just keep in mind that currently the swear imaging is a very niche market, uh, supplying the defense and the industry market mainly. To address the mass markets like the consumer or the automotive, we need to have a, a, dis a technological description because the, the standard ingas images are too expensive to address the consumer and the automotive. In 2021 and 2020, there were the entrance of Sony, Sony and the ST Microelectronics, which is maybe a sign that something is happening for the, for the consumer imaging, and there is a growing interest for the consumer imaging. Uh, the main driver for the main motivation for the adoption of SWIR is probably the, the integration of, um, of the, the, the illumination and also the, the 3D sensing under the OLED. And uh, for that purpose, the quantum dot technology is probably the, 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 the best candidate when we talk about imaging. Uh, finally, if the swear happens, uh, if it comes into the consumer, due to the huge volumes uh, of the, the smartphones equipped with the 3D sensing modules that could directly reach millions of units. OK. and uh, so. So thank you for your attention. I would like just to add a few words uh, to open the next topic. So in this presentation, we talked a lot about uh, the imaging technologies, the imager. But all the applications that we mentioned, when we talk about 3D sensing, about industry, defense, etc., everything works uh, with a light source in parallel. And there are also a lot of uh, technological challenges to overcome at the light source level to make SWIR possible in the mass market. So thank you very much for your attention. And uh, if you have questions, don't hesitate. Thank you. Thank you very much, Axel, for your great presentation. Yes, we start to have some questions coming up. But before that, let's now give the floor to Mathieu for his insight, for an industry insight. Mathieu, the floor is yours. Thank you, Faisal. Hello, everyone. So indeed, I am uh, going to, to talk about the SWIR light sources. So, as mentioned by, uh, by Axel, uh, SWIR light sources are, uh, are needed in the SWIR uh, imaging uh, applications, either to enhance uh, the illumination level, either for uh, time of flight applications where, yeah, without a source, uh, it, uh, it cannot work. Uh, and also, uh, as also mentioned by, uh, by Axel, to, um, yeah, each material has its, its own uh, spectral signature. So uh, if we, we want to look at a specific wavelength, uh, uh, having um, uh, SWIR light sources uh, uh, suitable for, for this is, uh, is required. OK. So yeah, 
before to, to dive deeper in the application and in the technologies, I would like to, to talk a bit about the optical properties of materials. So indeed, the materials have their uh, own uh, spectral signature. Uh, when I talk about optical properties, it, it, it can be uh, absorption. So absorption means uh, uh, the radiation eating a material uh, is uh, stopped. It can be a transmission, so meaning that when the radiation hits the material, it uh, goes through, so it seems uh, transparent. And it can also be uh, yeah, reflectivity, so when the radiation is hitting a material, the radiation is, uh, is going uh, back. So here, here are a few examples, maybe just to, to take a few of them. Let's talk about uh, water. So water uh, transmits uh, visible radiation. So we can uh, see uh, through uh, through water, but in the in the sphere at some uh, sphere wavelengths, the water is uh, absorbing the radiation, and uh, then uh, appears uh, dark uh, on uh, on image. Maybe another one. Yeah, let's take the human tissues. Also uh, specific uh, optical properties in the visible domain. The human tissues are are uh, absorbing the radiation, so we cannot see through the through the tissue tissues but uh, in the at sphere wavelengths uh, yeah the radiation are uh, are transmitted by the human uh, tissues so those uh, optical properties differences uh, open the door to uh, to many uh, specific or new applications um, as mentioned by uh, by axel sphere is uh, we can find sphere in uh, many markets or at least uh, Potentially, uh, because uh, not uh, all the market have uh, emerged yet. So uh, I will uh, go a bit deeper in different applications that we can find in those different markets. Uh, yeah. So one specific one is that uh, the telecom and uh, infrastructure. In this market, there is no imager, uh, but it's a big market for the sphere light sources. So no imager because uh, indeed for those applications uh, the receiver is most of the time uh, photodiodes or uh, yeah other uh, other receivers than um, than imager. In the in this market we can find application on uh, yeah optical communication with uh, optical fiber. Actually the the current technology for the optical uh, fiber is using uh, materials that, that are uh, perfectly perfectly fitting with the sphere. So thanks to the to the material, uh, there is a very good transmission of the of the optical signal signals through the through the fiber. So meaning that we can reach uh, for, yeah strong, stronger signals and uh, covering longer distances with the optical fiber. Another application is uh, yeah the free surface optical telecommunication. So it is uh, communication between uh, two networks. It can be uh, ground to ground. And uh, here, uh, the, the ability of uh, SWIR to uh, go through the air, what, whatever is the uh, weather, it can be, there can be fog or uh, anything. The, it does not matter for, uh, for SWIR. So uh, it's, uh, it's also uh, an advantage that is uh, of SWIR uh, regarding other, um, other wavelengths ranges. Looking at industrial, so yeah, Axel mentioned several uh, applications, and indeed in industrial markets there are many uh, applications. Uh, it's still a small small market, but uh, yeah, there are, there is uh, application like uh, fruit sorting, thanks to the three radiation that uh, can go through the skin of the of the fruits, and uh, thanks to the absorption of, of water. Uh, uh, absorption of uh, radiation by uh, by the water then uh, using sphere we can uh, easily see uh, moisture in uh, in fruit and we can uh, sort uh, sort the fruit uh, also regarding uh, recycling uh, in the visible domain it's sometimes difficult to uh, to differentiate plastics but uh, in the sphere domain uh, thanks to the spectral signature of the of the plastics it's uh, easily uh, differentiable um, what is the type of, uh, of plastic used and so then for recycling uh, industry it is a, uh, it, it is an opportunity for uh, to use uh, to use sphere in defense and uh, aerospace market uh, there are few applications as uh, mentioned by uh, by axel 
Uh, so actually, Swirl light sources are mainly used for uh, target designation, also uh, taking advantage of the Swirl uh, not impacted by the by the weather, so getting a good a good image, images. A difference is with uh, the Swirl Imager uh, market is that, uh, yeah, for instance, for enhanced vision, there is no light source uh, used because uh, indeed in a military application, for instance, uh, you don't want to, uh, to be detected by your enemy. Also, uh, not everybody is yet uh, equipped with the Swirl. It is a, a risk that uh, cannot be uh, taken. The mobile and consumer market. So, yeah, in uh, in, the, in this market, the main application for the Swear light sources is, will be the 3D sensing with a facial recognition uh, function in a, in a smartphone. So it's not uh, yeah, it's not yet a, a running market, but it's, uh, it's it will uh, it will emerge and uh, yeah, here big volume uh, are are expected. Uh, the the Swear, uh, one of the Swear interest is uh, that it is uh, safer for uh, for the eye compared to to the near. Uh, actually, uh, when to go a bit into into detail, the water that is on the surface of the eye is uh, absorbing the the radiation, and then the radiation does not uh, eat the the retina. So also they are taking advantage of the of the, the spectral signature of the of the material and of the of the water. Automotive and mobility is also an emerging uh, emerging market uh, with uh, so not yet uh, volumes uh, here, not yet uh, completely ready, but uh, prototypes are expected in 2025, as mentioned by uh, by Axel. Uh, it is uh, it is in indeed interesting for uh, 3D uh, scanning for uh, lidar. So with the uh, Swear, we can reach uh, longer distance for uh, for lidar. And also their uh, advantage of uh, not be impacted by the weather conditions. In the automotive and mobility, it's also interesting for uh, aut autonomous uh, driving, uh, for imaging uh, applications. Another market is uh, the medical market, also uh, yeah, a small market, uh, not expected on short or mid term to, to be uh, to be big because yeah, it's also. Uh, Related to, to medical, so it's not uh, every, we cannot we there is no application everywhere. Uh, some interesting applications are uh, blood uh, blood analysis, skin, eye, and dental uh, imaging, since, thanks to the human tissues uh, transmitting the the sphere radiation. So interesting to see the, the veins, for instance, and also for uh, for endoscopy. Now that uh, we have looked at the different applications, the different markets, let's uh, have a look at the different uh, Swear light uh, sources. So actually, uh, Swear, uh, Swear light is uh, naturally present on Earth with, by the sun, by the stars. We also find uh, conventional uh, light sources like uh, halogen, like uh, xenon uh, lamps. But here, uh, yeah, I'm going to focus more on the solid state uh, sphere light sources and the three main uh, sources being the LEDs and the two types of uh, lasers, the uh, EEL, so edge emitting laser, and the VXL, so uh, vertical cavity surface emitting uh, laser. Looking uh, a, bit, uh, a bit more in details to, to LED, here is, um, is an extract of a report that uh, we have done at, uh, at, uh, at PISEO, where we have looked at the portfolio of the different uh, Swear Light Sources manufacturers. So here it is uh, uh, an overview of the portfolio of uh, Ushio, which is, who is a Swear LED manufacturer, just to, to show the diversity of, uh, of products related to the wavelengths. We see that yeah, there are many uh, wavelengths, many uh, LEDs to cover the different wavelengths. And uh, also, yeah, interesting to look at the optical power that can be covered from 1.7 milliwatt to 4, uh, 4 watts. So regarding this, uh, this diversity, uh, the SWIR uh, three range is quite uh, wide, from uh, 1,000 to uh, 3,000 nanometers. So 2,000 nanometers uh, wide, 
uh, compared to the visible domain, uh, which is more around 300 nanometers uh, range, meaning that uh, for a manufacturer, it's not possible to, to cover, uh, to have product uh, for all, uh, all the wavelengths, all the, all the applications. So for the, um, to, to cover this, all the SWIR uh, light sources manufacturers solid state uh, lighting technologies are also pro proposing uh, customized uh, products. Still talking about uh, SWIR LEDs, here is, uh, is uh, yeah, we have looked also at the, at the technical uh, data of the, of the SWIR LEDs and especially at the wall plug efficiency parameter. This is a key parameter for the for the, when we look at LED. So wall plug efficiency is the, the radiant power divided by the electrical power, and uh, of course the, the higher the better. What we what's interesting to see here is that uh, at the low sphere uh, wavelengths we can reach uh, wall plug efficiency around 50%, which is quite close to the uh, visible LED, uh, the, the white. Uh, white LEDs, so which is a, a mature technology. So performance at low sphere wavelengths are, uh, are quite uh, good, but we see that uh, going higher in the wavelengths, the wall plug efficiency uh, is, uh, is decreasing. It's today uh, a challenge for the sphere LED manufacturers to, uh, to in increase this uh, wall plug efficiency uh, as, uh, as it is uh, requested by, uh, by the market. Here is a, an overview of uh, EEL, uh, of the portfolio of uh, EEL manufacturer, so uh, two, uh, two six. Also here we see uh, diversity in terms of uh, wavelengths and uh, yeah, diversity also uh, yeah, in different parameters. And uh, interesting to see yeah, the optical power that is covered from uh, 4 milliwatts to 700 uh, milliwatts. And uh, yeah, to cover the, the third uh, SL, SSL source uh, we mentioned here is uh, yeah, an overview of the portfolio of the of uh, Vertilas for uh, Vexel uh, Vexel devices. So also there, yeah, again uh, diversity in wavelengths and uh, uh, optical power from 115 to 255 milliwatts, so less than uh, what we have seen for the EEL of uh, 26. Talking about the uh, integration of those uh, of those light sources in uh, in the sphere, uh, we can notice that uh, yeah, it's important when yeah to take care of the of the materials that are uh, used, especially for uh, for optics. So in uh, in systems, uh, we use uh, usually uh, optics to uh, to shape the the beam of, of the of the light source and also uh, to, to protect the, the light source. And uh, in the visible light application, silicon is uh, very much used, uh, but uh, for, it does not fit completely for, uh, for SWIR. Indeed, uh, at 1,750 nanometers, silicon starts to significant, significantly absorb the SWIR. So it's, uh, yeah, alternatives have to be uh, have to be uh, found to uh, if we want to to work at those uh, those wavelengths, and uh, glass materials is a is a is a good alternative uh, for for this. Still talking about the, the integration, uh, so between the three light sources, uh, the choice uh, the choice has to be made when uh, when developing a system. And uh, actually, uh, yeah, each uh, of those uh, light sources have a, speci have a specificity, and uh, according to the to the application requirements, uh, we will choose one or one or the other. So, for instance, for the LED, the LED today are mainly used in the industrial application because it is an application where we need illumination. So, thanks to the narrow beam of the LED, but this beam we can shape to, uh, to illuminate, illuminate uh, larger uh, areas. It is an uh, interesting, uh, interesting device. Regarding uh, EEL, so EEL uh, has a narrow, narrow beam, coherent light, and is more powerful than a Vexel, and is uh, fitting uh, most of the telecom and infrastructure uh, application 
as we have seen with the optical fiber, for, for instance. So the Vexel with the lower power is uh, actually, than EL is actually interesting for uh, some industrial application. It remains uh, niche applications today, but uh, for instance, for, uh, for gas sensing, uh, Swear Vexel can, uh, can be used. And the expectation is that uh, with the emerging of the mobile and consumer market, Vexel should uh, should benefit of this uh, of this uh, growth, and uh, we should find uh, the Vexel in that uh, in that market uh, in the coming years. <clears throat> of course, there is uh, th there are challenges, and for the consumer market that uh, we expect to to emerge uh, in the coming years. Uh, one of the one of the challenge is, is to get uh, INP Vexel. Actually, it could be other uh, other technologies according to the wavelengths required. INP uh, is is uh, suitable uh, for uh, 5,550 uh, nanometers, and uh, this will be required for uh, for for some applications. And today, uh, yeah, INP Vexel are hardly uh, available, uh, but in terms of technology, uh, we don't expect that it should uh, be uh, uh, very, very difficult, because indeed when there are supply, yeah, manufacturers like uh, Lumentum and uh, 26 that uh, that uh, are uh, Vixel manufacturers with uh, gas technology, but they also have uh, laser with uh, INP. So by combining combining their uh, two um, two these two expert expertises, then. Uh, yeah, we expect that they, they could uh, deliver uh, INP uh, Vexel uh, for, uh, for the consumer market. A challenge for the, for the automotive, for the, li for the light sources, is that uh, is mainly for the, for the LiDAR where uh, yeah, significant power is, uh, is required uh, and with the optical characteristic of uh, laser. And today the Vexel and EEL, uh, yeah, the, they, they cannot uh, deliver enough enough power for for this application. So, uh, uh, an alternative uh, technology could be uh, another type of uh, of laser, the, the fiber laser. But uh, here there are some challenges for uh, for automotive because uh, it's uh, it's bigger uh, sphere light sources. So challenges for uh, for integration, and it's also much more expensive than uh, EEL and uh, Vexel. Now to uh, to conclude, I, I would like to to, uh, to discuss a bit about the the market trend. So yeah, one uh, one point to to um, to mention is that uh, yeah, this uh, this picture is uh, based on uh, units, not on uh, dollars. And uh, what we see is that uh, yeah, today the telecom and infrastructure uh, market is the biggest market for sphere light sources. It represents 99% uh, of the market, and uh, by 2026, uh, yeah, we expect uh, all the all the markets to to increase for sphere light sources, uh, including uh, the telecom and infrastructure market, and the emergence of the consumer market uh, will uh, will benefit to the to the sphere light sources uh, market. So, so this is uh, the end of my of my uh, presentation. Thank you for your uh, attention. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mathieu, for your very interesting presentation. We receive many questions in the live Q&A box uh, that we are about to answer now. So let's start with um, uh, maybe with you, uh, Axel, with, with a first question. Is SWIR wavelength necessary for under display integrations? Uh, thank you, thank you for this question. So, uh, so of course, this is uh, this is the the main question and uh, the main reason why SWIR is still uncertain. So, there are some activities uh, to towards the integration of uh, under display three uh, D sensing and under display facial recognition operating in the near infrared. So, actually, during the this under display requires some engineering at the, let's say, the 3D sensing module, but also at the, the display mo the, 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 on the display, the display module. 
So maybe in the future, someone can find an alternative to, uh, to, to Swear to do this, uh, this under display integration. So, uh, so that's why uh, there is a big question mark, mark about, about if the Swear will uh, success or not. Thank you, thank you, Axel. Um, another question, uh, maybe, maybe for still for you. Can, can we expect uh, Ingas images to be used in consumer applications? Uh, currently, Ingas images is uh, it, it looks very um, it looks very challenging uh, due to the, the the price of the technology. The main reason was this, this technology is a uh, high price, high cost. Is that uh, there is no uh, large wafer of uh, INP indium phosphide. So we cannot, and the ingas, uh, the ingas layer is grown on the INP wafer. So uh, there, there is a, let's say, a, a different process. For example, in Sony, they, they do a wafer reconstruction, and usually the process is made at, at the dye at the dye level. So in the short term, uh, we don't expect the ingas to come in the consumer. Maybe in the very long term, when uh, the indium technology, indium uh, phosphide uh, technology will be more major. But uh, currently, we believe it's more quantum dot for the next five years, let's say. Thank you, Axel. Just, just a comment also, keep in mind that uh, the, um, when, we, when we talk about uh, global shutter imaging or imaging for 3D sensing, we talk about large chips, uh, contrary to other uh, single point detectors. So uh, also this is the reason why. Okay, thank you, yeah. Uh, Mathieu, uh, one question for you. What are the advantages of SWIR SSL over SWIR conventional light sources? Okay, yeah, good question. So, yeah, in, indeed, I mentioned that uh, conventional, uh, there are, we can find conventional uh, light sources. Uh, and one of the advantages of the, of the SSL uh, light sources is, uh, is the lifetime. Uh, conventional light sources uh, have a few thousand hours uh, lifetime. Uh, with uh, with LED, uh, it can uh, be uh, it can go much uh, much higher, up to 50 uh, 50 k hours. Another uh, another advantage is uh, the ability to do uh, pulse modulation. Uh, with conventional uh, lighting, it is not uh, suitable. So for uh, for gated images, for instance, it is uh, it is uh, mandatory to to be able uh, to do a pulse uh, pulse modulation. But anyway, yeah, it is not the I, we don't think it is the end of uh, the of the life for the conventional light light sources, because uh, yeah, the um, the conventional light sources have a wider uh, spectrum. So for some application, it uh, it's interesting uh, with LEDs with laser. We are yeah. The, the the light source is really uh, uh, focusing on uh, one uh, one wavelength, or uh, yeah, a, a bit more than uh, than than, uh, than one more than, than uh, wavelengths. But uh, it's quite a, a small uh, small wavelength range that is uh, that is covered. Uh, and also, uh, but anyway, anyway, uh, the LED manufacturers they don't really feel the competition with conventional light sources because different applications, but they still see as in the visible that uh, SSL is taking over uh, from uh, from conventional, but conventional has still uh, interest. Thank you, Mathieu, for, for this uh, information. Uh, another question for you. Uh, let's jump on that one. Uh, is SWIR radiation uh, completely safe for human? Okay. Uh, no, indeed. Yeah, yeah, we mentioned that uh, SWIR is safer for the eye compared to, uh, to NIR, for instance. But uh, indeed, it's still, uh, it, it's, it, it's still a risk for, uh, for eye and skin, uh, depending on the power and the, the exposure time. Uh, it, it, it is not. Uh, it is not. We cannot say that. Uh, yeah, we can uh, be exposed to to swear without any uh, any risk. Uh, and uh, when you when we, when using uh, when using uh, laser, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, on developing a system based on laser, it is required to do a photobiological risk analysis. Uh, let's see another question. Um, maybe that will be for you, Axel. Uh, how does SWIR uh, different uh, to TOF solution we see in some phones today? Okay, so so when we talk about phone uh, about uh, TOF, we talk about uh, DTOF or ITOF 
technology so in the silicon uh, made in silicon in phones today so this requires a very specific architecture in the components and uh, when we see the the three industry uh, how it looks like uh, the, the the usual tough technique used in Swear is gated imaging so it's not the same uh, the same uh, it's not the same way uh, the same functioning as ITOF or DTOF so we believe there is a step further to first to build so 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 there is a difference between building the um, let's say the the imager uh, global shutter imaging imager for example or let's say a normal imager to to go towards ITOF or DTOF uh, including a swear material, etc. So uh, currently, the swear is not uh, a tough technology. Uh, all we all we can find as uh, uh, swear uh, imagers are not uh, operating in to uh, uh, with a tough modality. Uh, if we consider only the imagers of the swear, so uh, so there is not the so first of all the technology, the tough technology is not ready for the the swear currently. And uh, also, uh, it's the operating wavelengths. Uh, in the consumer, uh, currently in the consumer, the tough sensor operate in the near infrared and are made in silicon. So there is also the wavelength which differs. Thank you. Thank you, Excel. Uh, maybe we have time for a last question. Um, uh, does quantum uh, dot technology have the same performance as Ingas? For you, for me, okay. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, so no. The the quantum dot technology and the ingas technology have quite different uh, performance. Ingas is a very has a very high quantum efficiency all over the the the, the swear, not the swear, but on a broad range of the swear domain. Uh, whereas the quantum dots are um, have a um, let's say a, a peak. A peak quantum efficiency that can be tuned depending on the, the nature of the quantum dots. So, so the, the, the quantum dot sensors are quite less sensitive. Uh, the, the quantum efficiency is also on um, the peak is also lower than uh, for the ingas, and uh, there is also a reliability issue compared to the ingas uh, because the material could uh, the lifetime of the, the current uh, sensor could be um, damaged by uh, harsh. Uh, environment, for example, by uh, elevated temperature, elevated um, uh, light. So, so currently there are a lot of engineering to uh, optimize the quantum, the quantum dot sensors in terms of uh, efficiency, uh, quantum efficiency, uh, sensitivity, and also reliability. But we believe that if it's uh, if the performance is enough for the consumer, that could be sufficient to be to be uh, adopted. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Axel. Uh, the webcast is now ending. Uh, thank you to our speaker for their time and analysis. Please let me remind you that you can find all our products on our website, www.yolgroup.com. Do not forget to create your account on our new website to be informed of our latest news. To everyone, you will soon receive an email with the link to the recorded session within 24 hours. But please note that the presentation is already available and can be downloaded from the uh, resources section of the platform on the bottom of your screen. Don't hesitate to contact us if you have additional question. And for the remaining question, we will uh, get back to you. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a good day and take care.